Can you make the Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is for the students in the beginning. Um, let's talk about the European uh, Masters in Management program. So Masters in Management is a postgraduate business program aimed at providing advanced general management knowledge to graduates. Now, you can apply for an MIM no matter what field of study you've studied before. Um, and it is often tailored to help you get familiar with key aspects of the business world. Like, um, I know most of you here already have an idea of what we are talking about, but this is for the few that uh, have just joined the webinar to know more about the MIM programs. All right. So the features of the European MIM programs are they're mostly internationally oriented, and uh, they, it started in Europe, and now uh, US has US, Canada, UK, and several countries in Asia have also started offering the program. 85% uh, of all wo worldwide masters in management programs are offered in Europe, and most of the uh, courses are taught in English. Now, you do not require a lo uh, lot of work experience to join the program. This is the greatest advantage that you have, uh, unlike an MBA where you need at least uh, five to eight years of experience generally. So, uh, and most of these students who apply to an MIM have less than one year of work experience, which is usually an internship. And uh, the best part about this is this is completely affordable for everybody. This is cheaper than most other business programs like the MBA. So what are the admission requirements? Simple, a previous degree, often a bachelor's degree. Uh, then uh, you have the GMAT or the GRE. Uh, we will discuss uh, more about what the requirements for specific schools are with the speakers we have today. And uh, you need your admission documents. It depends, uh, like these will be the essays, the mini essays, the motivation and recommendation letters. Recommendation letters, very important. Uh, you could either have the essays, mini essays, or the motivation letter, or the uh, statement of purpose. Uh, and then finally, you need the proof of English proficiency, uh, the TOEFL or the IELTS. Um, I would also uh, like to ask if there are other uh, ways of uh, fulfilling this English proficiency uh, because in current times uh, I, I heard that US is also accepting Duolingo, so we will talk about that. Now, rankings per 2020 Financial Times, uh, University of St. Gallen comes at number one, HEC Paris at two, and ESSEC Business School at three. Now, please note that all the schools have their own particular type of naming, so you might get confused when you go through uh, various school websites and then find, oh, this is, uh, this is completely different from an MIM. Please do not get confused. Um, again, similarly, 2021 rankings for uh, the MIM from QS is HEC Paris is at one, London Business School is at two, and ASEC Business School is at number three. Now, our speakers today, <coughs> Eleanor from HEC Paris is the recruitment manager at HEC Paris, and she is... She, ha she holds a Master in Management Strategy from the University of Paris Dauphine. Um, Sonia, who has joined us from ESSEC Business School, is a Senior Manager at ESSEC uh, Business Development, and she holds a BA in Arts and Business Administration. So Alexandra is our former student. I think she's an incoming student at INSEAD, mm -hmm. who graduated from ESSEC Business School with a BBA last year. Uh, and uh, finally, Anand, we, some of us have met him before. He's a GMAT tutor from India. He's the founder and CEO of Anand Learning Academy. Last, we have Dr. Hubert Silly, who is our founder and CEO at MBA Center, and he's a test prep expert, and he's also the creator of events like the MBA Events World Tour, even Business School World Series, this, this edition that we are, we are talking about. So, yeah, uh, I hope uh, I have managed to introduce everyone so let's get into it. Our first speaker today, I think, is um, Eleanor. So, hi. Yes, hi, everyone. Uh, is it possible to share some slides? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to share with you. Um... So you Eleanor, so you work with uh, Nicolas Ouzé. Huh? You, you are working for Calgary Lafayette. Yeah, <laughs> I was working friend. for him. He's a good friend of mine, working... and he was my student. He was my student. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just trying to share my. Um, so my can you show it works, Karishma? So you have to to share your screen. Huh? Uh, okay. Is it can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, um, hi everyone. So I'm Eleonore. I'm a recruitment manager at HEC Paris. Uh, so I'm really here to be. Happy, I'm really happy to be here with you um, to uh, present the master in management that we have at HEC. 
I know that the time is quite short. I have like 10 minutes to present it, so I will try to be uh, concise and make it impactful. I will start just with a quick presentation of HEC Paris, and then I will dive into um, the program. So just a few words about HEC Paris. Um, so at HEC Paris, we offer a wide range of uh, programs. The Master in Management is a, is a pre-experience program, so it's really geared towards students between zero and two years of work experience. If you have more than three years of work experience, in this case, your profile might be a better fit for an MBA program. And if you have even more uh, experience, in this case, an executive uh, program with, a, with more than 10 years of experience can be a good fit. We also have non-degree programs like the PhD that are more designed for research and summer school programs that can be a good taste before committing uh, into a master program. I'm not going to spend too much time on these slides because Karishma, you told about the rankings, uh, but I just want to uh, highlight one ranking that is the fact that we are ranked third by the Alma Mater Index, which means that behind Stanford and Harvard, we are the third school in the world to train CEOs in their own industry. So it shows you how leadership is important for us at the HEC. It's something that we're going to evaluate in the admission process, but also something that we're going to teach you. And if you look just below at the facts and figures, you can see that we have 4,500 students enrolled in degree programs. So it's all the programs that I showed you previously. And it's also a very international environment because we have 105 different nationalities and the campus. And last but not least, but I'd like to highlight the fact that we have 60,000 alumni so more than a number, I think that you need to keep in mind that it's, um, it's a really dynamic network. We have, um, well, alumni everywhere in the world, and they're really great support during your study, but also after for your career placement and to help you with your career. Um, this slide just tell you what set, us, um, set HEC apart and what set also our master in management apart from other uh, programs. So there's, there are three elements, I think. The first one is the high quality standards. So it means that we try to maximize the class hours and minimize the, the class sizes. So you will never be more than 50 students per classes. It can be even less for some elective courses. And our, and our courses are only taught by main instructors. So we have no assistant teachers. 50% of them are research faculty and 50% of them are practitioners. So this is my second point, that we have a perfect balance between theory and practice. What is important for us is to give you the, um, I would say, the, the, the strong foundation, theoretical foundation that you need, but also the practical approach that will allow you to transfer smoothly into your professional life. So by practical approach, I mean that the fact that your courses are going to be taught by practitioners, but also that you will have a real life case studies, consulting projects, company projects throughout the year at ATC Paris. And finally, um, we also have an inspiring environment, so a strong campus social life with a lot of associations, sports clubs, and uh, yeah. really, um, yes, a lot of interaction between students from Sorry, different programs. We don't see your, we don't see your presentation. It's, it's blank. I thought it was me only. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I, I don't see. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, um, well, I don't know why. You see it now? No, no. Um, well, um, well, I really don't know why. Well, then, then, then maybe you can make a presentation. Don't share the slide if you don't. I don't know. Yeah. You can I see guess. it. Can see now. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> I thought um, that it was my computer, so okay, you want to say anything? Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. no matter. You can just see that the three yeah. points I was uh, just talking about yeah. are their quality standards, perfect balance between theory and practice, and the inspiring environment thanks to association clubs uh, that you have on the campus, because you need to uh, keep in mind that your um, schoolmates uh, today are going to be your business partners maybe tomorrow. We have also a lot of networking events on the campus. Um, so it's fairs, a um, lot of also of conferences, uh, projects with companies, and also for a personal development program. Okay. Um, so this is the most important part. So no matter if you don't see my, my screen before, uh, because we're going to deep dive into the master in management program. 
Um, so just to begin with the class profile, so in this program we have 250 international students, so we try to have a well-balanced in well-balanced diversity, so it represents 64 different nationalities and also well-balanced diversity in terms of backgrounds, uh, because you can see that we welcome students, of course, from business uh, and engineering backgrounds, but also students from other backgrounds like humanities, sciences, political uh, sciences and many others. And the other part is that the average age of this program is 23, so it shows you that it's really an undergraduate program uh, towards students between zero and three years of work experience. And we also welcome students from, um, well, different um, nationalities. You can see on this slide the GMAT average score that we have. Um, maybe we are going to uh, talk a bit more about it uh, with your uh, questions. Um, but yes, it's the average that we have for this, uh, the average of the admitted student uh, score for this program. About the program structure, so this program is a two-year program. So you start with a first year that is a generous phase, and then you have a specialization phase during the second year. And you can have a gap year in between. It's really the opportunity for you to enhance your work experience, uh, as uh, work experience is not a prerequisite to enter in this program. So during the generous phase, uh, you have some curriculums, but you can also try uh, to start to customize this year. And I think it's also one um, important point about this program that it's very customizable. Um, so, um, yes, you will be able to uh, pick out some electives uh, between business, uh, digital strategy, international affairs, and social innovation. Uh, well, if you still see my screen, you can see some examples of courses just uh, below. Those are examples, so keep in mind that uh, the academic team try to uh, make the program as pertinent as possible. So, it's possible that the courses from a year to another can evolve. Um, yes to make it as burdens as possible and to uh, correspond to the needs of the, mar of the job markets. And because of this practical approach, you will also have some fact project, consulting project, and a lot of uh, interaction uh, with companies throughout the year. Then during the second year, the specialization phase, you will have to do different options. You can choose to stay at EGC Paris. In this case, uh, you can pick one of our specializations. So you can get specialized in strategic management, in finance, marketing, sustainability, and social innovation and um, many others, or you can choose to do a double degree with one of our partner university. In this case, you will have a degree from ATC, a diploma from ATC, and a diploma from the partner university. So we have partnership with universities like MIT, like Berkeley, like HKUST, and many others. Um, you can find some of them uh, just on, this, uh, on these slides. And in the partner university, you get also a specialization. Or you can choose also um, to do uh, the SEMS program. In this case, you will do one semester at HEC uh, Paris and one semester in the one of the SEMS uh, partner university. And to finalize the second year, uh, you can uh, do also a certificate. So the certificate is also the way to enhance your uh, expertise in one field. So you can pick one of those eight certificates. And um, yes, it's also a way to get, get a connection with uh, companies because those uh, certificates are designed by HEC faculties and by companies. Like, for example, the Excellence in Client Experience one is designed with um, Kering, or Leve Mastery, and the Luxury one with Kering. Um, so once again, a way to strengthen your experience uh, of strong connections with companies. And I'm just going to end, up, end this uh, quick presentation with the career path after the Master in Management. Um, has uh, the program, well, uh, the programs offer a lot of different uh, specialization. The career placements are quite also uh, wide. Uh, we have about 40% of the students which is consulting, about one quarter of the students which is finance services, and for the other one, it can be as, um, as diverse as going into consumer goods, industry, luxury uh, fields. So um, you can also see the grad, well, they have the employed uh, rate after three months. So we have 96% uh, of the graduates employed within three months. And for the four remaining persons, and it's students who choose to do um, a research or a PhD. And uh, well, some students and most of the students choose to stay in Europe, um, in France, or at least in Europe. But we also have students who want to, well, who choose to go back in their home country or to uh, work uh, outside from uh, France. Yes, I think it's the end of my presentation uh, and we'll have like Q&A uh, time. But if you have any question after this presentation uh, about the mission process, about the programs or anything, you can just contact us at this uh, email address, admissionsmasters at hec.fr. <clears throat> so basically, Karishma, what are the, what are the questions that uh, students are asking? Um, mostly, uh, uh, let's talk about the 
GMAT onwards. So uh, that uh, I saw it was seven hundred and eight. Is that am I right? So yeah. um, can we talk more about that because that's quite yes, yes. It's, uh, it's I think the the question that you have one of the questions that we have the most uh, for the students, the GMAT score and what is the minimum score that we accept. Uh, students need to keep in mind that we have a holistic approach when reviewing the application. So the GMAT score is going, of course, to be important, but not only the GMAT score, uh, the um, academic excellence, the international exposure, uh, also the work experience that includes internship and uh, extracurricular activities and their motivation is also going to be important. So it's really a well-balanced combination of all the factors that is going to be important for us. So it's, that's why we don't ask for a minimum score at the GMAT, but uh, the 708 um, average score gives them an idea of the, the score they can target uh, to be admitted in the pro long term in the program. But for example, if they have an outstanding uh, GPA and maybe a, a GMAT that is a bit lower, it can be totally fine and vice versa. Okay, um, let's also talk about the financial situation. Uh, what what is the deal with scholarships? Is are there enough scholarships for uh, students from abroad, and is it necessary to apply in a particular round to get in, get those scholarships? And can could you please explain more? Yes, this is a good question because we have uh, one scholarship that is the FL uh, scholarship that is in partnership with Campus France. For this one, students need to apply during the first round. So the first round is uh, unfortunately for this year and uh, already passed uh, because it, they need to uh, apply before, uh, well, no later than October 20th. Uh, but we have also other uh, scholarship program and the main one is the HEC Foundation uh, scholarship. For this one, no matter the round they apply to, uh, if they are admitted to HEC Paris, their application will be automatically reviewed uh, for this um, scholarship and it's a merit-based scholarship so it would be all the um, elements of the application that is going to count uh, for the attribution of the scholarship and it can range from 4,000 euros to 12,000 euros and we also have a scholarship for women that is the I Women's Potential Scholarship. For this one it's exactly the same process as the HEC Foundation one it's just that the amounts can range up from uh, well um, it can be uh, 15,000 euros. And uh, I also suggest that students uh, have a look at um, at Campus France uh, in India or in the country, uh, because uh, Campus France also offers some uh, local scholarships uh, for students who want uh, to uh, study abroad and have a lot of information to provide um, them. All right. Um, if you have any questions. <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I have a few. So basically, what what is the what is the current situation now? Have you noticed more uh, applicants, few applicants? Is it the same as last year? Uh, what, what have you noticed? What are the trends? Uh, yes, well, it's very difficult to have a trend because we only have one uh, one uh, round for the moment that is uh, finished. But for the moment, that we noticed that uh, an increase in the application for this first round uh, from international students, uh, especially, and I think that it's because they saw the importance of continuing their studies uh, during this uh, time of crisis, maybe instead of uh, getting employed uh, right now. Um, and I think that maybe the strong car, the strong, uh, car placement of HEC Paris made them feel more confident and that it was, it, well, it's a, it's a safe investment um, for their car placement. So for the moment, okay. the trend will be an increase. Now the, I, I'm going to ask you a, a, a naughty question. Uh, I, I was talking, we made a seminar yesterday and we said that, of course, there's a the French model, which is the two-year MIM, okay, that you have at ESCP, at, at ESSEC, uh, at, um, at, uh, at HEC, and at other programs like ENEO, ETEC. And then we now have the competition of new entrants, LBS, because the MIM at LBS is pretty new, the one from INSEAD, that is a one-year program, IE, one-year program. So it seems that there's really a French model and uh, uh, an international model. Okay, um, how, how do you, how do you, what would you say to a student who hesitates between a one-year program and a two-year program? What is the advantage of uh, studying two years versus one year? Yes, no, that's really a good question. And as you mentioned, Carriage during your presentation, those programs are really designed for students with not a lot of work experience. So I would say that the strength of a two-year program is first during the first year to have um, the strong foundation in business and management to also give students time to think about their uh, career paths, career objectives, um, 
because they can start to customize their repeats, but then get specialized very um, in a very specific field during the second year. So it gives them also time to, I would say, gain the maturity. I don't know if the right term, but to ha have maturity uh, before entering into the into the car the job markets. And also, um, it's also the opportunity to have a gap year in between. And the gap year is quite important for a student to enhance their professional experience, uh, to enhance also their networks. So I think that it's quite, um, well, it's the two-year program is quite complete uh, with a generalist and specialization of days. All right. Uh, okay. there, there, there are a few questions from students. So can you talk more about the application deadline for this year, I guess? Yes, uh, well, we have four application deadlines uh, throughout the years. So the first one was uh, no later than October 20th. And for the second one, for example, it's January the 6th. Um, so students need to submit the application no later than one of those deadlines that they can find also on the on the website. Um, and uh, after they will have the administrative results. So it's the time when they're going to know if they are, are going to have an interview with us. They have the interview and then they have the final uh, admission results. Um, what also students keep in mind need to keep in mind is that they need to apply when their application is the strongest. So with the with the strongest GMAT score, with the strongest uh, elements uh, that I mentioned uh, previously, uh, because well, at each passing rounds the number of um, seats decrease, but we will all uh, we will have um, seats uh, in all the fourth rounds. So really apply when your application is the strongest. Okay, um, there is one question. I'm just skipping one and I'll come back to that. So considering the current situation, are there any changes in the application process? Um, yes, um, yes, I know that a lot of students have questions about, for example, GMAT waiver or English test waiver. Um, to, um, to be fair with all applicants, we think that it's important to keep the, the test, the management and the English test compulsory. Uh, but we accept online version of the test. Um, so online GMAT or online uh, TOI, for example, are accepted. So this is the main uh, change, I would say, in the, in the situation. And also, of course, the interview are all held uh, online uh, thanks to Zoom. And if there is all in personal cases, just send an email to admissionsmaster.atc.fr and we will try to help you as much as possible for those uh, tests. All right. Another question from the students is how many months of international work experience uh, matters, uh, counts weight is written so. International work experience is it the question? International uh, well, work experience. Okay. Well, we don't ask, um, well, it's not mandatory uh, to, um, to apply with an international uh, work, um, well, international work experience. Uh, if students, for example, have done a did a net change or a did a, I don't know, volunteering experience abroad, it can count as an international exposure or international experience. So it's totally fine for us. Uh, and they can have, for example, work experience in their own country. It's also totally fine. And by work experience, we include uh, also experience in association, in clubs, uh, and internships. So I would say that uh, good internships uh, with, for example, an exchange program um, abroad um, is, well, it's a good profile. It can be element for a good profile. All right. And I think the final question is more on tuition waivers, if any. Are there um, any other than the ones you've mentioned? Yes, no, unfortunately, no, uh, no tuition waiver waiver are, um, are accepted uh, by ATC Paris. Once again, it's the same uh, as I would say rule, it's to be fair as all um, applicants. Um, so you have some application fees, it's 101 um, 10 euros. And um, yes, unfortunately you can't waive them. All right, uh, those are my questions from the students, so uh, yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> Yes, there's, a, there's a last question that we need to ask from you, Eleanor. What is the acceptance rate at uh, your MIM, roughly? Yes. Yes, it's a good question. So the acceptance rate, well, it's a selective process and we look for um, equally um, competitive students, but the acceptance rate is one out of seven uh, students uh, admissible. And then among the admissible students, it's one out of three students that are accepted in the program after the interview. Okay. Okay, no, so of course, so we had uh, some experience, by the way, Leonor. So last year we had many students, and of course, remember that on round four, because there are questions about the GMAT, etc., mm -hmm. the technicity was quite, quite flexible, and they accepted students without GMAT. It was the round four. So we had uh, uh, hey. Andre, Asuline, uh, what's his name, uh, Cesare Complizzi, Andre Asuline is from France, and now from Brazil. 
Cesare from Italy, and, and they, they can be pretty flexible, but of course they were outstanding candidates, and there are other ways of selecting candidates through their uh, grades, their, their degree, uh, their, uh, and, uh, their uh, what they, the, the, the rest yeah. one was, uh, from uh, McKinsey. Uh, yeah, um, no, this is a yeah. good question, because yeah. last year, uh, due to the, well, the start of the, of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we were not quite used to the system. It was the beginning of the online GMAT. There was some mm -hmm. issue with uh, online version for some countries. So uh, for the last rounds, we accept students uh, without the GMAT or without the jury. But we don't want uh, to make it as like um, a rule. And mm -hmm. it was just very, um, it was just because it was the start of the pandemic and we know that uh, at the moment there are um, possibilities to have the, the GMAT or the GRE uh, by any other way. So that's why it was like this la last year, but not um, for this year. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Eleonore. So probably this year, from the all and and internet work, there will be something like 50 students from us who will apply to HEC. And we expect to have about uh, 10 admits, something like that, 10 admits. Well, yes, okay. We're looking forward to reading the application yeah. in this case. Okay, <laughs> okay perfect. And they, if they have any questions, they can just email us at admissions masters. And basically what we're, we're going to do now, yeah, you know, we're going to send you uh, the list of the students who have applied with their CV. Huh? You received sure. that this week. And then you can, uh, we send you a lot of information on, on the Excel file. Okay. That you know. By the way, we are launching a system called Outreach, whereby it's a sort of private uh, LinkedIn, whereby you can see the the, the 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 CV of the student, a bit like LinkedIn, and also the student as as a as a rating, so you can see from the rating uh, where he stands. Huh? Oh, well. And so it's okay, a, a very useful system using a uh, big data and artificial intelligence. Now now only big data, but soon artificial intelligence as well. Okay. Thank you okay. very much, Eleonore. Thank, Thank you. you. Sonia, from, uh, from ESSEC, okay. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Can you so, hear Sonia, me? You basically, you're based in Singapore, from what I understand, yeah? Are you based in Singapore? So right, you right. Singapore is a campus. So by, yes, uh, I can, uh, by, uh, we are very glad to, to meet you. So mm -hmm. same thing for ESSEC. We have the demands for the MIM, but also a lot for the MIF. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had about five students who got accepted to the to the to UMIF, and they are very happy. Students from from uh, from Lebanon, students from from uh, <coughs> from Italy, from, from Spain, etc. So there is there is uh, and also uh, a lot of students who did the, the master with Supelec, I believe. In um, so there is the central Supelec in data science, and yep. also yep. master with Supelec, I believe, in entrepreneurship. Huh? Yeah, Okay. Uh, uh, if you can present uh, yourself uh, and also the, the, if you can make a presentation of ESSEC. Sure, perfect. Well, um, thank you everyone. Nice to meet you all and happy mm -hmm. Diwali to those who celebrate. Um, uh, yes, I base in Singapore. So I base in the Singapore campus in ESSEC, uh, but I do uh, handle both um, campus applications. So for students that actually mostly for from Southeast, Southeast Asia that I manage those applications, but happy to, uh, you know, talk about the MIM programs or the MIF for data science. If you guys any questions about those, let me uh, quickly share my presentation here. And wait. Bottom right. Can you see? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So um, the ESSEC MIM program is available in both um, Paris or Sergi and Singapore. Uh, students usually can, can choose which campus they would like to start. Um, I'll get into a bit of the details. Basically, uh, a very quick introduction about ESSEC. Um, we are positioning ourselves nowadays uh, as a global business school with a French roots. Basically, um, we're no longer only based in, in France. Uh, we have two campuses in, in Paris, one in Morocco and one in Singapore, and there is also a digital campus. Um, there are full-fetch campus and staff uh, available 
in, in both uh, Sergi and Singapore. So for students who, who choose to start in either location, they will be able to have all the support uh, from, the, you know, from the schools as well as you know, from, from the alumni in the region. Basically, um, uh, an overview of what we offer. Um, these are the English uh, thoughts program that, that uh, we focus on in Singapore. Based, uh, together with MIM, there is also a master in finance and as well as the data science and the strategy and management of international business, the SNEAP program. Uh, at the moment, ASIC MIM is ranked number uh, three on Financial Times. Uh, a very quick overview of you know where the school is at the moment. We have about sixty-two thousand alumni uh, globally, and the students uh, who graduate from ESSEC, uh, generally the the average salary uh, when they you know complete the program is about fifty to four thousand euros uh, per year. So uh, what makes uh, ESSEC special? We we focus a lot in learning by doing. A lot of the programs. Uh, you know, we use this business case, uh, games, interaction seminars, projects uh, to give the students an experience uh, that is enriching, not just about academic experience, but also there's a lot of hands-on practical experience during the program. Uh, one thing about the MIM is there is a lot of uh, flexibilities involved. Um, so students can also do internship, apprenticeship, and many other, you know, uh, work experience during the program. Um, so a little bit of uh, highlights of our career services. So not only in Sergi but also in Singapore, both career service uh, department uh, facilitate uh, all students and all alumni if they need help. So we uh, we manage over twenty one or thousand uh, apprenticeship uh, offers and as well as six thousand uh, graduate job offers. And then we do uh, personal counseling for every individual students if they need. Uh, and also, ESSEC is one of the, the few schools that have our own uh, venture uh, incubator. So students who are interested to start their own uh, venture during the program and when they graduate from the program, we, we have you know uh, ESSEC venture that is available. Um, uh, a quick view of you know established uh, ESSEC alumni. So. This is an example and a list of you know, a more accomplished uh, alumni that we have uh, from, from globally, uh, from you know, McKinsey, in, uh, a managing director in Singapore, to the managing director of DBS Bank in Singapore, uh, to you know, uh, a range of CEOs and, and uh, top level management uh, across you know, the world. Um, OK, so the MIM program. Uh, in the nutshell, you know, there is a lot of things that is offered. I always um, uh, would, would, would compare MIM to an uh, international buffet. You know, if you're not sure uh, exactly what you want, uh, this is the great program for fresh graduate students or uh, younger students to have, you know, many different options. Um, from, you know, double degrees uh, to, to really flexible designing, you know, your curriculum to exchanges, to uh, chairs. So I'm, I'm going to get into a little bit of details. Basically, to imagine um, the program can be as short as 15 months and can be as long as three to four years. Usually, we, we refer it as a two-year program because that is the standard you know, uh, or average time that students will spend with us in the MIM in ESSEC. But uh, you can customize your experience and you can really decide on how long you want to spend in the program. If you would like, you can graduate faster. If you would uh, you know, rather spend time and take your time to, to get different experience, you can stretch your, uh, your, your degree to you know, two or three years uh, by getting you know, professional experience or exchange degree uh, um, you know, options. So there are three different uh, criteria or three different buckets of uh, experience that students will need to fulfill in order to complete the MIM degree. So uh, the first one, of course, is the academic uh, curriculum. All students will have to complete uh, at least 25 courses. 10 of them are the core courses um, that is required. And then all the remaining are basically electives. So ESSEC offer, uh, offer 200 uh, plus different electives option and based on your interest you can take you know from from different area uh, 
could be a marketing, it could be uh, you know, uh, operations, it could be logistic, it could be anything. And there is over 47 different spe specializations available. So imagine a specialization is basically like a major. Uh, each of them usually would require five to six courses to complete the specialization. So for example, you may be interested, or you think you may be interested in, in, in uh, marketing or in luxury, then you can take you know, one or two elective first to see um, you know, if that's something that uh, really, you know, what you want to do. And then if you really uh, confirm that interest, you can continue taking the electives uh, and then you know, fulfill the specialization. So students can take at least uh, one or two or even three specializations depending on um, how many uh, courses you want to take in that, in that area. Uh, there is no cap. I want to um, also highlight there's no maximum uh, cap on how many courses that students can take. You can take as many as you like. So if you're hungry, you can take more, for example. Um, and on top of that, there are other uh, you know, projects that is uh, involved during the program. Uh, I'll get to that a bit more later. And uh, the second bucket of requirement that students need to fulfill is the professional experience. Basically, um, basically uh, all students require to have at least one year of professional experience in order to complete the MIM program. So imagine if uh, a fresh graduate student is completing their bachelor degree and join ESSEC right away for the MIM, then they will need to have at least 12 months of uh, work experience before they can graduate from uh, MIM. So, it can be an internship, it can be an apprenticeship, it can be uh, many different uh, ways to, to fulfill this. Uh, and the order to um, collect these experience is also up to you as a student. So one thing about a SEC MIM is really flexible. Uh, the last thing is, of course, you know, the international experience. But for most uh, international students, meaning you're a non-French student, uh, this criteria is pretty much already you know, fulfilled. Um, most students who spend time in both Singapore and France campus, uh, there is option to, to do exchange or double degree also if you like to um, you know, explore different countries, uh, but it's not a requirement anymore. So during this uh, MIM or the master experience, basically um, what we require is when you apply, uh, the students will have to start the first nine to 10 months in the campus that you apply. It could be in Singapore, it could be uh, Sergi in France. Um, in Singapore, because we are much smaller, so the courses are packaged together, meaning that students will be able to fulfill all the core courses that is required, and then they would have at least one of the specialization um, you know, complete during that first 10 months of the uh, 10 months period. So the tracks that we offer in uh, the Singapore campus, for example, uh, the business management in Asia, corporate finance, fintech, or innovation, entrepreneurship, and sustainability. However, if students are choosing to start in France, basically you will have a number of uh, credits that you can bid for the course that you like, and it's really flexible, and there's no uh, criteria on you know, how, how you would like to do that. Um, so for the first, you know, nine to 10 months, you'll be based in your home campus, the first campus that when you apply. Afterwards, students will have the option to, for example, start an internship, or um, they would like to, if they would like to start an exchange program. Uh, ESSEC has over 105 exchange partners, uh, including oh, University of Melbourne, uh, UBC in Canada or Tsinghua University in China uh, or you know LBS in, in UK or Berkeley or Cornell for example uh, or we also have uh, double degree partners so on the right hand side here you'll see the double degree partners so the difference between uh, exchange and a double degree is usually exchange is shorter uh, students will spend about one semester in in the partner university but the double degree is usually um, at least a year in, in the other school. So students will spend the first year in ESSEC and then perhaps the second year in the double degree uh, university.
So going back to, to the curriculum, after the first academic year, like the first nine to 10 months, um, then students will have the option to either um, stay in the same campus or um, they can swap to you know, the other uh, country. So from Singapore to France or from France to Singapore, or they can start an internship uh, or ex you know, uh, apprenticeship as well. Uh, as well as they can do an exchange or double degree. Because of the flexibility and ASEC, um, the way that we structure our module, uh, you know, I would say about 30 plus percent of our students do engage in apprenticeship. And if they would like, this is a good way to finance their study while they are uh, uh, getting work experience sponsored by the company as well. So uh, other, other than that, there are, you know, uh, corporate projects that we um, design for the students. And um, there are, for example, the junior consultant experience or the Asia strategy consultant project that uh, we work with companies directly, for example, uh, L'Oreal or Johnson & Johnson uh, or Capgemini, then students engage with them uh, to, to do consulting projects as soon as they enter the program. And there's something I would like to also highlight is um, ASEC has uh, a concept of chairs. Basically, uh, students, um, these are company-sponsored research projects. So if you, uh, I'm not quite sure, you know, what particular industry or, or area of focus that you would like to pursue, the chairs are a very good way for students to understand, you know, the, um, that, that industry better. So for example, have a chair with uh, LVMH. So for students who want to get into the luxury market, then they can do an LVMH chair. It is taken as an elective for six months. Students will be working directly with the company uh, to understand, you know, how how the you know the company is operating or how that uh, specific uh, industry, you know, the inside of that. Uh, or there are chairs with a center on business analytics. So students who are interested in consulting, perhaps they can join the Accenture chair. Or uh, for sports management, we work with you know uh, uh, a football club, you know PSG, for students who, who are interested to get some you know in, in hands-on or insight uh, from from different different areas. So there are many chairs that is available for students to explore what particular job field that they would like to pursue when they graduate. So a very quick uh, let me introduce uh, or an example of our students. So this is a very typical. Uh, profile of uh, MIM student. Uh, in, in this case, Supita, who's from Thailand, she's interested in luxury brand management. So her experience is more here uh, targeted in that, that area. So her, uh, her experience, she started her MIM degree in Singapore in 2017. Uh, so while she was there, she um, basically completed you know, the junior consultant experience uh, the projects, and then she received her first specialization, which is in business management in Asia. So for the first nine months, she spent time in Singapore uh, because you know it was closer to home for her, and you know she she preferred to prepare herself better before she uh, she moved to Europe. Then uh, basically after that, uh, she moved. Uh, she got three job offers, and she got three uh, internship offers. Two of them were in Singapore, uh, and then one was in uh, Paris. So she decided to choose the one in Paris. She went to L'Oreal in Paris and did a six months internship. Then uh, she started her uh, second year in, um, in Sergi campus, you know, basically uh, a year later. Uh, and then during that time, she uh, entered the LVMH chair. She did um, uh, this experience to give her a chance also to she find herself an other internship with Christian Dior uh, while she was there and then completing the entire uh, the rest of her you know requirement academic requirement and uh, she recently you know uh, you know disregard what happened uh, during COVID in the job market she managed to uh, find her job uh, a job in Singapore so she recently moved back to Singapore and uh, started working full time uh, at Louis Vuitton uh, at the moment. So this is a, a typical MIM experience, uh, MIM students that we have, um, and that's her her story. So 
the remaining are uh, uh, a statistic uh, about the program, the company that we, that we have. Uh, you, there are multiple job fair and um, events that is happening on campus. Uh, students who will be able to meet these companies usually uh, uh, in person or via you know, Zoom at the moment, uh, as well as there are <coughs> All these are available on the ESSEC job portal that students will be able to see, you know, what type of uh, uh, offer or opening that is available for ESSEC students. And uh, MIM is, uh, is a program that we don't require a particular uh, background. So there's no uh, prerequisite. Uh, any students from any uh, previous study can, can apply to. Um, so we, we welcome anyone to, to join uh, MIM as long as you know they they complete or you know they fulfill the admission requirement so it's very standardized um i would say uh, you know, similar to other schools the mim application will require uh, a cv a motivation letter recommendations um there will be an interview for everyone um after they are shortlisted to the to the program there's four rounds of application uh this year and uh, Similarly, we, we finished our round one already, and then uh, moving onward, the application will be open until uh, end of April. That is uh, pretty much it. So if, if you have uh, interest to talk to any ESSEC students, we also have a portal that is uh, on the website available called ESSEC Talk, and you can speak directly to the student ambassador that we, we, we welcome anyone who want to get them. Uh, to know the program better, to talk to the students directly, to get some uh, insight okay. from the student. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Sonia. Sorry. Hello. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So you can hear yeah. me. Uh, I have a few questions from the students. So uh, somebody has asked, is mm -hmm. there a possibility of a GMAT GRE waiver? No, <laughs> um, not not anymore. So um, it is true that so last year in uh, round four, the, the last round, uh, ESSEC did give uh, give some flexibility for admission. I think most of the, the French school uh, were similar, but uh, we no longer offer uh, wafer anymore. So um, students can take the online GMAT or GRE if they, they cannot, you know, find a test center that is available physically but um at least something that is uh, required so we don't offer a waiver okay uh, there's one more question about scholarships what are the scholarships uh, that uh, ESSEC would give to the students and how do you apply for them right um so we offer for internal scholarship there is basically a diversity scholarship and a, a academic excellence scholarship uh, there is no application to these um, during the admission review, the faculty or the, the admission committee will, uh, will discuss, you know, the profiles uh, during the admission jury, and we will distribute the scholarship according to the profile of the student. So if you are non-French uh, national, so let's say you are not a French student, usually then you will qualify for uh, the diversity scholarship. And then uh, it's based on, you know, the profile, uh, in the application, both based on GPA, GMAT, GRE score, um, students will uh, will receive the the result um, together with the admission decision. So when you receive the uh, the result of the application, you will also know if you are uh, getting scholarship from ESSEC or not. So these are the internal scholarship. Yeah, the external scholarship usually um, is the IFO, which is uh, available for round one. Okay. Okay, uh, there's one more question that came quite early. So, uh, will part-time work experience, like uh, founding a startup during undergraduate or internship, count for total work experience? Um, it depends. <laughs> so, it would depends on on admissions to see if they um, approve that experience or not. So, um, the one year work experience requirement can be offset by previous experience. So if the students apply and they may have, you know, let's say at least one or two years of work experience by the time they join uh, the MIM program, those experience can be uh, offset the 
professional uh, experience requirement. So it's actually for those, um, they don't have to do internship anymore. They can graduate uh, the program uh, in 15 months, so they can graduate much faster. But then for international students, a lot of them would still prefer to do it because it's a good way for them to get uh, connections and, and to get more experience you know, overseas. So for the student visa that we offer in Singapore as well as in France, uh, they can work. So in Singapore, students can work up to 16 uh, hours per week. So if they would like to join uh, the campus here, for example, they can take on part-time jobs. Some of them do, uh, you know, it can be a small job like babysitting or if they can take on small, you know, consulting projects, uh, whatever they find to, to, to get some, make some pocket money, basically. Okay, uh, final question from my side is, could you tell us more about the apprenticeship? A little bit more. Yeah, so apprenticeship is, um, well, uh, I'll try to explain the, the, the best way I can. Uh, I think the French might be able to explain it much better than me. Um, but for example, uh, these are jobs. To understand them, basically an apprenticeship is uh, students who have to apply. Uh, there are many of them hosted in the ESSEC portal. Uh, so we don't encourage students to um, rely on them uh, as you know, a, a financing option because we don't know if you will receive an apprenticeship or not until you started the program. So you cannot rely on them uh, to, to cover your tuition or to cover your living expenses. But basically, apprenticeship is a good way for students to get ex, um, uh, experience and exposure. So uh, usually it's uh, a, at least a year long. So they would be studying and working at the same time or depends on the arrangement with the company. They can do it, uh, for example, um, three months studying and then three months working and three months studying, three months working. So it, it depends on the company and, and the arrangement of the company. But then they do need to commit about a year in total in working in these French companies. Um, so usually they would require a level of French, but it's not uh, a must, it's not mandatory. So it depends on the company itself also. Uh, you know, if the position uh, is offered to non-French speaking student. Uh, so the, the best part of uh, apprenticeship is once you are offered a position, for example, then the company will be paying for the tuition fee. So students will get refund back to them their, their entire tuition fee. And then on top of that, they get a monthly uh, salary. So it's a great way to, to get experience and also to, you know, to, to get financing support uh, by the company. But of course, you know, it is, uh, there is opportunity cost. You know, if you decided to do that, usually they will have to stretch uh, the program to, you know, three years or, or even longer because they will have to fulfill all the uh, academic requirement. And then, you know, on top of that, they are doing, you know, this, this you know, uh, work experience. So the you know the opportunity causes they cannot start working you know they cannot start their full time job uh, as quickly as as their classmates so it's something to to consider if, if it is a good uh, you know option for for the student so uh, ESSEC do do host all those information in the ESSEC portal so it's for for all students including international students um, you know to to apply for the apprenticeship. Okay. Yes, yeah. um, explained the uh, apprenticeship very well, so it's a way for you to to work and study at the same time. It's a bit like a part-time MBA uh, somehow, where you work and you study. The only question that I have is that I don't know if you're a non-European student. Yes. Uh, if you can uh, get if you can get a visa, uh, if your visa allows you to, to to work as much as required. Maybe yes, maybe no. I, I have no idea. Uh, yes, uh, for, for now, it is very common also for ESSEC mm -hmm. students to get apprenticeship and because the way that the program is so flexible, so um, we do have a lot of international students do, uh, you know, uh, get, uh, get apprenticeship. So the student visa that we offer will, will you know, will, will enable the students to, to do that. Um, it's just like uh, any internship or part-time job uh, that they may get uh, during their study. Uh, 
they do have to wait until um, after being in France for one year to officially start the apprenticeship. So that is a uh, um, something to keep in mind. So if you are a European student or if you have a European passport, then uh, those or residency, those students can start apprenticeship uh, quite early. Like uh, I think after six months or so, they can start it much earlier. But for non uh, European students, they will have to wait until they have lived in France for at least one year to, mm -hmm. to officially start the apprenticeship. So let's say um, if you have an offer uh, that is available, you, you cannot start until that um, one year mark has started. So usually for students who, who are keen on uh, trying for apprenticeship, we would recommend them to, to start in France, not Singapore. Yeah. So that, so that uh, Indian students understand so you have mm -hmm. to see that uh, your uh, French companies, uh, companies based in France, because it can be Chinese or Indian, they pay mm -hmm. a certain tax. Uh, there's a tax on, on uh, training, okay? And basically, uh, the, uh, it's all called OPCA, and then it means that the the ESSEC will receive money from from the state somehow, okay? From It's the Ministry of Labor that manage that. So ESSEC will receive money from that. And for the company, they will pay you. You get something like 1,200, 1,600 euros, which is very good money. And, but of course, cost of living in France is, is quite expensive. And companies, they are tax, there is a tax exemption, so they, have, they don't have to pay any social tax on that. Okay? So of course, it's a good way for them to get a very bright person from ESSEC at a very low cost. And it doesn't cost them a lot of money because I may, Wonder probably some Indian students may say, but how is it possible to get uh, fifty thousand a year uh, there? Because part is paid by French tax, and the other part is paid by the company that is uh, that has tax exemption on social uh, social tax. And that's why it's very uh, interesting for the student and also very interesting for the company. Okay. Um, so yes, let's come back to that. Okay. Uh, since we have. You see, on this conference, you have many African and, Europe and Indian students, a great majority of Indian students. It's also a great advantage of the two-year program. Can you mention, for instance, at HEC, the gap year? How does it work, the gap year? What is a gap year? And is it common or not common at HEC, Eleanor? Um, yes, the gap year is uh, very common at HEC because think, um, of this practical approach during the first year. Um, the, the students really want to enhance their work experience during this gap year. The gap year is, is uh, well, it's quite flexible. The student can choose to do, for example, two internships of six months, or they can also choose to work on a personal project. For example, they have the uh, project of uh, launching a startup. They can do it also during their uh, gap year. And they can also do internship abroad, so it's really flexible. I have an example, for example, of a student uh, who started uh, with a consulting um, internship in Dubai, and then uh, he, do, he did a New York and internship in internship with finance. So it's really a way to just explore some fields um, and to uh, yes, create a new career objectives and enhance your network and enhance your work experience. So you see, I have two sons. One is at HEC, the other one at ESCP. And what they did is that after the internship, the apprenticeship, they got a job offer. Huh? So after, so during the gap year, so it's a bit like an MBA in the US, where you have a, during the summer internship. So basically, they have a one-year internship uh, gap year. Usually after that, they receive a job offer. Usually, they get two to three uh, internships huh? at the same time. But what you have to understand, if you do a gap year, uh, for I'm talking to my Indian students, it help you, you get a normal salary. For instance. My son, when he was at uh, Rothschild, he was paid 1,800 per month. And then when he went to work for uh, Lafayette Investment in New York, he was paid uh, four times that, huh? you see? So it's uh, so you have to, to see that if you do gap year, it's not like an internship, you make real money, you get a real salary. Huh? So it's something, uh, it's something important. By the way, that's something that our Indian students have to know. If you get accepted to such schools, financing is not an issue. Okay, now Sonia, how do students finance, especially from India, how do they finance their studies? You have some statistics, some research on that. Uh, what does it work? Um, I don't have the statistic with me, uh, but 
basically ESSEC has a scholarship available and there's also Prodigy Finance which is a student loan that is I know quite common for, for Indian students so if uh, you are admitted in, in, uh, into ESSEC for example you can apply to this Prodigy loan um, it will cover 80% uh, of your tuition fee and part of your living expenses as well so obviously, uh, we are not affiliated, you know, by no means that ESSEC is working with them. But all ESSEC students, or I know a lot of universities are also working for, you know, um, a part of their, uh, the list. Um, so, so any students from these uh, schools um, who are entering this program will, will be able to apply for uh, a student loan to, to pursue their study. So that's usually a, a common financing option. And then, of course, there's also small jobs like part-time jobs uh, that is available. They can work on campus uh, if they like, or they can find you know small uh, part-time jobs outside of campus also. Okay, there's another question that I want to ask to ask you. So it's for Eleanor. So can you tell us what are what is the famous PSB? So how does it work when you're a non-European community a student? And you want to stay a bit more. So how, how long more are you allowed to stay after having completed your uh, studies at HEC, for instance? Uh, well, you can stay one year after the after the program, uh, thanks to your uh, student visa, especially if you did an internship before um, going to, uh, getting employed in a company in France. Uh, this allows you to keep the student visa during one year. And most of the time, uh, the students get employed then in another company, and the um, company take over the visa process. So it's not as I, I would say the, the biggest issue for the students uh, because they have their visa, um, student visa, and then uh, they get um, the the help of the company and of HEC uh, to get a working visa, another type of visa. Uh, there is a lot of different visa um, available for um, for students um, graduating from business schools. Um, according also to your uh, major, according to uh, the fact that if you want, for example, to launch a company, um, but who will provide you support in any case for the visa. Okay, so what is very important, which our Indian students have to understand, is that basically you have, you have two options. Either you decide to go back to India, which of course would be a bit stupid because you should take advantage that you're in Europe to stay in Europe or uh, stay in Singapore. And then, basically, the second, of course, the most optimistic option is that you get the job offer, and then uh, it's done. Hence, the advantage of the summer internship and maybe the apprenticeship or the gap year. Because, of course, if you have an apprenticeship or a gap year, you're almost certain to receive a job offer. Okay. And if it doesn't it doesn't work, what you can do is you can use you can go to see an employer. Okay. And uh, you can uh, say to the employer that anyway, uh, you'll be exempt visa free for a year, so they can hire you. Then you, you leave the company enough time <coughs> to test you. And after, after six months, if it works well, then they will start the visa process. Okay? Uh, and you have to understand that if you're ESSEC or INSEAD or HEC graduate, yes, of course, they are somehow affected by the current crisis. But of course, this type of graduates are highly in demand. Okay, you have to understand that when companies are facing problems, they need they need the best to work with them. They need the best, the most intelligent, the most motivated. Huh? Okay, uh, and uh, that's usually they do. Huh? You have perfectly seen my company. Uh, the, the, you see, even even when, when you're in this difficult time like now for any small and medium sized business, even for the big ones, you, you need the best in your company. Huh? Okay. Uh, the tools who are going to have problems are people who are less performing. The tools who perform well, they should be more problem. Okay. So now, well, we couldn't get inside today, so we ask um, Alexandra to come. So Alexandra was my student. Huh? Okay. She's by the way, she's an ESSEC BBA graduate Hello. to start with, so she went to ESSEC, and she got accepted to INSEAD. So can you tell me more about your background because you have an unusual nationality? Okay. I'm sure that most Indian students they don't even know where to put your country on on, on the map. Huh? Okay, but you speak many languages. Yes, yeah, so hello, I'm Alexandra. I'm from Moldova originally, but I decided to do my bachelor's degree in, at ESSEC in France. I've had the chance to also visit the Singapore campus, which was really nice. 
And afterwards, I decided to continue my studies with the MIM program. Um, I was Hubert's student, so we applied for LBS, HEC, um, St. Gallen, and INSEAD, and eventually I selected INSEAD um, for, prefer uh, for personal preferences. Um, the process went uh, very well. It was a very thorough discussion about uh, the career plans that I envisage after the master's. Um, also, uh, the different uh, structures of the programs, because as you know, HSC and ESSEC, for instance, have these two-year programs, whereas LBS and INSEAD are very fast-paced uh, courses, uh, programs that um, last for about 10 months. Um, I've also had the opportunity to visit the INSEAD campus, and I really liked uh, the atmosphere and uh, the diversity of the uh, professors and the students, and eventually decided to um, pursue my studies uh, there. I was supposed to be part of uh, the pioneer um, promotion, so I was supposed to start this year actually, but I deferred uh, due to the pandemic. Um, and uh, I also got accepted to LBS. Um, when I had uh, these two acceptance letters, I stopped the process with St. Gallen and yeah, HEC rejected me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so we see, uh, we see that, uh, uh, we see uh, uh, how it works. Um, so basically, uh, Alessandra, you know you have already a BBA from ESSEC, which yes. is, of course, a, a great degree. Where have you decided to, to continue studies in, for, a master, for a master's? Because I know that you took a, a gap year before starting in ZEAD, and you're working for KPMG or Ernst & Young? No, I'm, I'm currently working for Deloitte, but I'm in the right. process with some consulting firms. So mm -hmm. starting from next week, I'm going to be in the process. Um, I don't mm -hmm. want to say too many things, but I think it's going to be an asset on my CV, and it's going to give me the possibility to actually uh, secure an even better internship after INSEAD because as we all know, or you might not know, but actually the new MIM program was uh, created by MBB. Uh, so they were very involved in designing the curriculum and I currently have friends who are doing the MIM and they are very impressed by the academic level, which is super intense and they're learning a lot. Mm. Um, so um, yeah, I'm actually switching slowly towards consulting and I want to work in this industry and I genuinely think that INSEAD is gonna help me secure that uh, due to the knowledge that I'm gonna get and also the network which is very valuable. But Deloitte it's already you work in audit more than, than in consulting? Yeah. Uh, I, mean? I currently work in audit but I mm. I want to work in consulting. Yeah, but because they're right, it could be consulting as well. Huh? They have, they yeah, but it's a different department. kind of consulting yeah. and uh, the level yeah, of no. prestige is also different. And this uh, le learning curve as well. You get to learn mm -hmm. way more at MPB rather than Deloitte. Yeah, of course, uh, I understand. Um, so, uh, how long did you, uh, so how long did you take for the process? How long did it take? Uh, to prepare the GMAT, the application? Um, so to be completely honest, I started preparing the GMAT pretty well in advance when I was doing my internship after the third year. So um, it took me actually six months, but I prepared it um, by myself. So I didn't know Hubert um, by then. So I, I actually tried all the different uh, resources possible. I've tried Manhattan, Kaplan, I've tried some French uh, GMAT tutors. Um, I've tried Veritas Prep, and it took me quite a, a long time. Uh, I actually took the GMAT twice, um, and uh, overall it took me six months to prepare the GMAT, and afterwards I started the application process in January, um, and I applied for the third round, so basically I started receiving my, my uh, admission offers in April. Okay, so and what, what did you find most difficult in the process? Um, well, for me, GMAT was quite stressful, but as well, uh, the difficult part was actually choosing among the choices that I had, because 
In the beginning, I actually wanted to do St. Gallen because I've seen the rankings and it, it was the best in uh, strategy and international management. But then when I visited INSEAD um, and I've seen the potential that the, that the program has, I actually changed my mind. So uh, the choice was really tough because all of the programs that I applied to were really good. And I really had to think about uh, which one uh, to choose depending on my career path and yeah. By the way, last year we got about 10 students accepted to INSEAD and only two chose the program, okay? Uh, so basically, of course, the, the program has a lot of strengths. At the same time, you have to see that INSEAD is a super costly program and you have no apprenticeship possible. And they have an internship, but the internship is at, at the end of the program, okay? Uh, and the other problem that you have with INSEAD, the program is still not ranked, okay? So you see that now there's a fierce competition. That's something, by the way, we had a, a meeting with uh, the team yesterday, and we see that now the growth is in the MIM. So of course, the French business school like HEC, ESSEC, ESCP are very well equipped for that because it is what we call the Grand École Programme. So there's, there's a long tradition, okay? And we've been lucky that this MIM develops, okay? Because for a long time, the MIM was not uh, something that we could sell internationally, okay? And of course, we have seen a source. So now, look, uh, we have 20 students from India for uh, meeting on, on somehow French, on French MIMs, even though ESSEC or INSEAD have campuses outside France, they are still originally uh, with French roots. And so that's that's the point that we still have. So tell me, there was no issue with, with the cost and with the, the program structure, the one-year program, was it an issue or not for you? Oh, well, it is an issue and I still don't know how I'm going to solve it. But uh, you have financing opportunities, you have brand capital and you have uh, prodigy finance. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think, I mean, in terms of cost, if you compare it to uh, SEC or AHEC, for instance, um, it's, it's pretty much the same because you have to... Um, pay for two years, I mean, the cost of living, you have to um, to to spend money for two years while you're studying. And I think in the end, it's more or less the same. Okay, it's a it's an important, uh, it's an important thing to see. Because um, finding an apprenticeship, it's not impossible. But if you don't speak French fluently, it's quite difficult. It's quite competitive to secure an apprenticeship. So I wouldn't recommend relying on that. It depends, but you can learn French. For instance, I have many of my students from uh, Delhi who are attending Alliance Francaise courses. Mm -hmm. So they expect to be like B2 before starting, and then they want to increase to C1 uh, after one or two years, which is, it's a great, uh, we have many Indian students at the Alliance Francaise in Delhi. Okay. I don't know if they have classes or online, but they go. So tell me, what, what, is, what was the admission process at INSEAD? So what was, uh, is, it, is it comparable to the one that we've seen with ESSEC or HEC? Was it a bit different? Um, I would say it was more or less the same, but there are still quite uh, some differences because they really want to see you as a diverse candidate and they, want, they don't put that much stress on your academic performance compared to the other uh, two schools, which are very academic performance oriented. I remember I spoke to the, to the program director during the open days, and he also stressed uh, this idea of being diverse and um, having an open-minded uh, attitude and uh, having different uh, experiences. Uh, for instance, um, right now, my friends who are doing actually the meme, um, have a super diverse class. Uh, they have people who have done uh, social sciences, um, people who have done even drama. So the program is really uh, focused on diversity. Uh, you really had to, to show that you are a well-rounded candidate and uh, that uh, you have been, you have, you have international exposure because in the end, INSEAD is the business school for the world. Uh, so it, it doesn't have, for instance, as they said during the open days, this cultural dominance of uh, different students. They try to make sure that um, the cohort is as diverse as possible. So there is no dominant culture that you tend to observe in the other 
business schools, for instance, when I was at ESSEC, um, there are uh, there are Asian students and Indian students um, predominantly uh, from the international student cohort, whereas at INSEAD they make sure that uh, the cohort is really uh, well balanced from that standpoint. Yeah. Tell me, Eleanor, I see that you did not really agree, and I, I cannot really agree as well because I have lots of students who have been accepted to HEC uh, who uh, had good grades but were not like, uh, obviously, they have not been selected for the grades. So, what, what is what is your what is your policy with, with, with the grade? Is there a no go or where up to where are you ready to go with the student? Well, it's a bit like the the GMAT exam or the management test exam. We don't um, ask for a minimum grade, and it's really um, as I was uh, saying previously, the well combination of academic excellence, motivation, work experience, international exposure, and the GMAT score that is going to be important for us. So that was I was uh, not completely uh, agreeing with um, Alexandra when she told that academic excellence was the only criteria we were um, looking at at HEC Paris, uh, because I have example of students. Uh, for example, accepted in the Master in Management, or for example, coming from political science with like average grades, but they have an outstanding profile with a really interesting work experience, international exposure. And um, what I agree with Alexandra, and that we also look at um, at HEC Paris, will be, will be the soft skills, especially during the interview and thanks to the AC questions. So it's also important for us to have open minded candidates candidates who are um, able to um, manage and uh, be, um, yes, well, to be at ease in an international context because it's a very international environment that we have at HEC Paris. Leadership also is something that we're going to evaluate and assess in the application process. Um, and yes, leadership, uh, team spirit, and um, diversity are the three main soft skills that we are also going to assess in the application process. So yes, well, just because... <laughs> with the Indian students who know, is that uh, uh, there are two things, and they, they are pretty well aware of that. Is that, for instance, if you apply in the US, in the UK program, it's so that, for instance, a, uh, for instance, school like LSC, like Imperial, they ask you for a minimum grade. Okay, basically, you need to be, uh, uh, I would say, a top top ten percent student. Okay, uh, so basically, even if you have great leadership, great international exposure, you cannot get into uh, in, uh, LSC. Or, uh, or Imperial College, okay? So for instance, I had students who, uh, who didn't have the grades to even apply to these schools, okay? And who got uh, LBS or INSEAD or other schools that are present here. So basically, I can say from the outside that these schools are pretty open-minded because probably, I don't know if they will agree, but the GMAT compensates a lot. Imagine that you are, uh, you are so, so student because you are involved in many extracurricular activities, you love sport, you love drama, etc. But then you get to 700, it will compensate and HEC will understand that you wanted to spend your time doing something else. The fact is now that you have to understand that this school, HEC, ESSEC, ESCP, they recruit a lot from preparatory classes, okay? And it's true that in some stage, they don't want some schools, some programs to to, uh, to allow people to avoid the preparatory classes, okay, to do a BBA program and then uh, switch to uh, to some of these classes. That's what I, I've noticed. You have to understand that for basically what you have to understand for, for the audience that is here is that basically these schools they want to attract the best students in the world. Okay, you you're not French, okay, so you didn't go to preparatory classes. Okay, so basically they want to attract you when you're 20, 21. Okay, and you want to attract the best. Okay, and of course the criteria there are very different from the criteria that they have with students who are 18, 19 years old. Okay, they use different criteria because uh, when you have the, I remember when my son had an interview with HEC uh, when he was 19 years old, like, there was very little about leadership, for instance. Okay, it was basically about knowledge. Okay, so it was, it was a different type of, of thing. But you have to understand that these schools are uh, foster academic excellence. Okay. Uh, you have to see that they are reputable institutions. Uh, HEC was created in the 19th century, okay? Uh, ESSEC, I don't even know, at the beginning of the 20th century, probably. So, okay, you have to understand that the former president of France is an HEC graduate, okay? Uh, that they have uh, the, one of the former prime ministers of France 
where, where ESCP graduates, the guy who is managing the Brexit for the European Commission is an ESCP graduate, okay, Michel Barney, etc. So these schools, they foster academic excellence. And it's true that a school like INSEAD has much more freedom in the way they, they collaborate. For instance, you have to see, Alexandra, that uh, if you uh, HEC and if you say uh, we have decided to launch a program in collaboration with McKinsey, Ben, and BCG, okay, they will say great, but also we need to make sure that the degree is recognized by the states. Okay, they have different accrediting bodies. So, of course, it's always the advantage okay, of being a private organization versus of being uh, so basically, I don't know if I understood, but you have to know that SEC and ESCB belong to the Chamber of Commerce. And they are, they are financed by the Chamber of Commerce, which you see by the Chamber of Commerce of Paris, okay, and uh, ESSEC by the Chamber of Commerce of the Val d'Oise, which is a, a, a department a bit outside France. And because of that, so they have advantages, okay, they receive money, okay, from them, but also they receive, uh, they receive, they are also restrictions uh, that are given by the accreditation body, by the French state, by the Chamber of Commerce, etc that have a word to say because they are they they, they, are, they have been financing this organization for uh, um, more than a century for, for HEC and they have their work to say that's what makes them very very powerful voilà. okay, okay. Uh, Sonia uh, maybe a, a, a word from uh, from from a sec so yes you, you agree with me that that at the same time yes you foster academic excellence but what do you do yourself you're Singaporean or are you from from Singapore Sonia, where are you from? Are you from Singapore? Hong Kong. I'm from Hong Kong originally. Yep, I live in Singapore. So you agree? So what do you do to foster uh, uh, international exposure in your program? Um, well, living in Singapore is, is actually a very international experience itself. Uh, of course, um, the, the, the student body, right? Um, I would say they, they do have a lot of uh, among students, they, they definitely have a very diverse group um, itself that they they have to work together on projects and, you know, they, they a lot of time cannot choose their own teammates. You know, the faculty will assign uh, and force different nationality to work together, for example, in a lot of these uh, consulting projects that, that is part of the program. Um, and then for, for international exposure, there is a study trip that is pretty much involved in uh, part of every program, MIM uh, and other, you know, finance or data science program, they go outside of the campus, you know, uh, in Singapore, they go to Hong Kong or New York uh, for finance, for example. For MIM, they also went to Hong Kong and sometimes they go to Shanghai to meet with uh, companies and ESSEC alumni. So what we do is we usually uh, will select a committee of students and then we give them the alumni uh, contact information or the corporate uh, partners that we have. And then students reach out to these companies directly and to schedule the visit. So uh, also uh, a chance for them to you know connect with uh, these companies uh, personally and and to arrange a visit uh, so having a physical campus uh, in mm -hmm. Singapore that's that's what we do and also you know in same as in in France so they do the study trip um, go outside of uh, Paris and they, they meet you know different uh, companies and, and organization to to get to know what they do and also to you know meet the alumni in those regions usually Okay, very good. And also what you have to see, Alexandra, you know that I did my, my master and my PhD after having graduated from Ecole Normale Supérieure. I did my master and my PhD at Harvard. And when I was at Harvard, there were lots of Americans. And I can tell you that at the beginning, I didn't feel very, uh, the, the, even though they said they are very international, it was not that international. There are many guys from Boston, many Americans. So I had, I had probably the same feeling as when you arrived. It's always true. That when you have a school that has roots somewhere, and Harvard has roots in America, ESSEC has roots in in in, uh, in France, and so is is HEC, that you're going to, to come in a school that has roots, which is not the case of uh, of INSEAD, which is a purely international school. So of course it's a very different uh, approach. But I think that at the same time, uh, you can hear from my accent, uh, you my Indian students that I'm French. So you're going to come in a nice country, one of the greatest countries in the world. Uh, with quality of life. Uh, French are, I believe, kind people, relatively intelligent, educated. I live in Belgium now, and I can see the difference. So probably, so that Belgians are probably 
kinder in some way, but you will not have the same uh, uh, quality of exchange. Huh? Uh, French are fans of arts, politics as well. So if you want to go, huh? so it's also good to go in a country. For instance, me, if I decide to study at ISB or IIT, I also want to experience India. You understand? I don't want to be in a place that is like a, a sort of Disneyland with no roots, no identity. Huh? Okay. So I want to be in a place that has an identity. If I want, if I decide to study at, I don't know, in China, I want to feel that I'm in China as well. If I study, when I went to study, uh, when I went to Harvard myself, I wanted to be in America. I didn't want to be in a place. I didn't want to be like a place like in Seattle that has no uh, identity, no cultural identity. I wanted to be in America. Imagine that Indian students want to come here. They also want to learn French. You see, uh, uh, Alexandra, have many students who are learning French. They also want to live in Europe, they also want to have their roots in Europe somehow. Uh, they know they will, do, they will go back to India, but they want, they want to make this experience. Uh, uh, no, uh, well, that's where we are, okay? I think it's a personal preference because I already speak French and I've already experienced the French business school experience, so I wanted mm -hmm. of course, yeah, that yeah. would complement my education, so it's a matter of choice. Yeah, but what I want to say is that you see a lot of students who, are, who come to study in Europe, they also want to experience Europe and they also want to experience something real. So uh, I have a, a student who wants to experience Italy because she loves Italy. I have other students who want to experience Germany because they want to live there. Okay, so you have, it's important to talk of internationalism, but at the same time, when you come to HEC or ESSEC, and if you study at ESSEC, Sergi Pontoise, or uh, HEC Paris, you will also have something, you've been in a very international atmosphere, but something with, with roots as well, with, with an history, with, with, a, no, with, with a culture, with an identity. And uh, this identity is one of the strongest identity that we have in Europe with the British one and with the German one. Okay. Uh, so basically, last word for Anand. Anand? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Anand is a, is a, runs a GMAT, GMAT uh, test prep center. He's, he's one of our partners in, in India. He's a GMAT teacher. So basically, um, you have a lot of requests for you, for you all, from your students, or is it increasing? The, the interest is increasing? So far, not much students are there, but still, I'm working on the marketing side and all. I'm getting the students, speaking to them personally, visiting various societies and all. So let's see over the period of time it will come definitely. But how much how much demand have you got for European school? It's it's you think it's picking up or what, what do you think? What sorry, do you think? sorry, come again, can't be. Yeah, you have demand for European programs picking up. Yeah. And programs. Yeah, you see demands picking up for HEC, INSEAD, uh ESSEC. Is it something that you see picking up? Yeah, definitely. I'm speaking, yeah. Yeah. And and you, uh, what what do they like about coming to to study in Europe in a European uh, program? What do you think they like? What do you think Indians like in this? They like basically they're more keen about the faculty side and how's the job opportunities. First of all, that's most important. And where do they see after MBAs and all? How's the job market? Whether there's any stay back opportunities or not, which we always keep on saying. Two years. Some countries give two years. Some countries give after work. You can stay there for a longer period of time. So they're keen for that. Mostly they are interested in the college and the, how is the course structure faculty over there, whether they'll get exposure to, the, to that uh, subject which they are choosing or not. So, so many questions keeps coming up. Yeah. Uh, for instance, Palaksh, are you with us? Palaksh, Palaksh Jain, are you with us? No, I don't know. I don't know if, if he's there. So, uh, yeah, because I, I see many names. Uh, uh, I see many names here. But what I want to say uh, for you, Eleonore, for you, Alexandra, for you, Sonia, is that now I have students and parents who call me and say, I want my son to study in Europe. Huh? It's, it's, uh, they are very clear. They don't want to hear about Canada. They don't want to hear about US. They say, we know that they will have a great uh, experience. Uh, it's safe. They will find a job. There's a visa. It's stable. So basically, Europe is attractive. Huh? You have to see. So it's very, very common that I, I've never seen, for instance, for MIM, I've never seen someone who told me I want to do my MIM in America. No. And even now for MBAs, they tend to favor Europe. But I know there was there was Palak with our student, for instance, who is preparing his, his admissions for HEC, ESEC, ESCP, and in Seattle. So it's, I would like him to, to but yes, there, there is, 
you have to see there's, there's a lot of demand you see no no uh, by the way there was uh, anushka she's not here anymore she left because you have to see it's, it's Iwadi, Eleanor and sonia it's a track our, our christmas for us okay uh, yes because they have a firework so there's a lot of noise uh, so uh, do you see the interest for european programs uh, increasing uh, anand what do you think yeah definitely Okay. Been, the the, the class now. Yeah. yeah, due to the festive season, many people are staying now uh, at their hometowns. So I'm expecting in the over period of time they'll come back here in Bangalore so that I can access them in a group. That's what I'm yeah. planning to the next. Right? Okay. So that I can guide them properly with a nice presentation and all those things. The ones yeah, they're back here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, most of our Indian students are leaving because we have a GMAT class at 10 30. So they say that GMAT class same mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, so uh, it was very nice to have you. So we talked this afternoon to European students. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So of course, uh, me I'm, I'm uh, so I'm, I would say I like to give the final word. So, um, but first of all, I'm, I'm very happy because when when I started MBA Center, we are many sending students to to top US MBA. So many Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, etc. The M7 probably. And of course, it was interesting to see how the market has evolved. Huh? And of course, I remember that when I started. They were putting forward, oh, my friend was putting forward, Hubert is French, but he went to Harvard. So there was like, like, okay, he's not very legitimate, but he went to Harvard, so don't worry, he knows the thing. And now the fact that I'm French is helping a lot in this business, because I have so many people applying for MIM, okay? And plus, since I have a son, uh, two of my sons are in top French business schools, I, I can really share that from within. And when I talk to parents, because now I'm 50 years old, so I talk to parents, so basically I talk to people who are my age, and then I share my experience of my kids having studying at uh, ESCP and uh, NTC, and uh, and uh, they they got uh, and, and they like that. By the way, Sonia, my, my two sons didn't get ESSEC. Okay, <laughs> they, they didn't. so you have to see that ESSEC is, is is it's very difficult to get in. Huh? It's very difficult to get in as a as a, as a high school student, if you want. Huh? If you see what I mean, you to take preparatory classes. Uh, you need to be uh, a top of the top, huh? really a top of the top. Uh, so basically, it's very interesting to see that now being French is a plus because we we somehow dominate this market, okay? And uh, of course, because we have a culture of excellence. And what I find interesting is that people, you say, and then they come here for jobs, but also they want to discover the future, okay? I know that you're trying to stay, and I'm very surprised that when they refer to me, for instance, I'm very surprised that Sometimes they write to me in French. My Indian students, they, they try to write a sentence in French. Okay, okay, right. Okay, it means that trying to, to get to know the culture. Okay, so they will they will get to know the, the things. So they, they tell me one more, merci, s'il vous plaît, this type of thing. So they, they try to learn and they go to Alliance Francaise and they are very, very happy. And I always say to the parents, you know, if your kids speak two European languages, usually English and French or English and German, it's a big plus for them to say. Well, right. It was very nice to talk to you. Okay, we'll have another one. Okay, with uh, with things, and of course, it's very interesting to see the interest that we can raise from uh, from India. Okay, a last word, Anna, maybe because you have been waiting for one one hour and a half. A last word. What yes. would you say? <laughs> we are motivated by MIMs. What would you say? Definitely, I'm trying my best. Let's see. Okay, do do have them. So I'm celebrating all the posters which I keep getting from you guys. I keep circulating among the students so that they can come to know what MBA Center is doing. Okay, right? yes, of course. Nice yeah. So thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Okay. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Eleonore. So I will see you later on at 3 30 this afternoon. There will be about uh, 30 to 40 students because of course we are stronger. And now MBA Center is developing a lot in Latin America, but of course. Latin America is still another story huh, now to, to develop. But we have we have demands and we are now developing, as you see, a lot in Chile and Peru. Okay, but uh, with with, uh, with big centers. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.